Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Crying News Extra Interview Session. It's a program where we invite innovators and uh, stakeholders in the blockchain, crypto, and fintech ecosystem to come air their point and the impact they are making in the blockchain ecosystem. So uh, uh, here with me, I have uh, innovators who are joining us to talk about uh, an interesting topic. It's a pleasure to have them. Uh, I have with me uh, George Cousin. She is the CEO of Nano Foundation. And director Apia. Judge, you are welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, also joining uh, Judge is the he is the CEO and founder of Nano Foundation and uh, in the person of Colin Lemahu. Colin, you're welcome to Kanye Zester. Hey, yeah, thank you very much for having me here. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. I hope I didn't murder your last name. Uh, <laughs> No, it was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a very hard one to pronounce. <laughs> okay, no problem. It's a pleasure to have you uh, come talk about the future of decentralization. We've seen the, yeah. uh, the, the way the world is moving and the way things have been done in this 21st century. And we've seen the pandemic uh, playing its role and people now realizing how the new normal, they say, uh, how things are going uh, digital. So we want to see what uh, decentralization is doing in this ecosystem. But before we go straight to that, I would like to uh, have your background. Let me start with you, uh, Colin, uh, just a brief about your background. Um, yeah, my background is I'm a software engineer. So I've done programming for lots of um, Fortune 500 companies, but I have an interest in economics and that's what drew me into um, the cryptocurrency space. and. It's what made me want to uh, build Nano. It's to to make something that was decentralized money that people can use to um, in in their day to day lives. Interesting. Uh, you you are a programmer, so you have a that background. Uh, let me see if I hear from George. George, uh, what was your background like? So I'm not a programmer, um, but my background is um, kind of in the FX world and in managing um, teams and operations. Um, so a bit of a mixture. Um, and obviously I, I've been with Nano Foundation for coming up to three years um, next month. Um, and you know we've got a clear goal of making the most efficient currency uh, for the real world. So super exciting times, definitely. Interesting to uh, with this a missed background in, in one uh, project is going to be amazing. A nano project must be so superb. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, decentralization. What are some of the advantages of decentralization when it comes to finance and payment? You've seen that even uh, during this pandemic, uh, nations are everything is going digital. People don't want to talk, uh, touch cash. So what's the role of uh, decentralization, Colin? Colin, do you want to jump in or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, decentralization is important because it, it gives people control over, over the money that they have. In um, a lot of the world, there's a lot of regulation, there's a lot of restriction on people using their money, um, the money that they've earned. So decentralization and decentralized money means people get to control the money that they earned and use it in the way that they want. Yeah, we believe that everyone has a right over their own money. And decentralization insulates um, users and people from failures of centralized authorities. So whether that's government or banks, I mean, not just only not touching cash, which you've just mentioned with the global pandemic, it's about you know the restriction of access um, to people's own money um, that this global pandemic has really um, really restricted. And so therefore, in our minds, decentralization is the most important factor, you know, when it comes to payments moving forward. Yeah, um, you know, okay, go ahead. I was going to say, there's a, there's a really great way to illustrate um, why decentralization is so important in a story around what happened in 2016 in India. Um, the government there um, decided to remove two notes out of circulation, um, two rupee notes, to fight corruption. Um, within their payments, within their economy. And instead of actually fighting corruption, it really affected um, those people in their um, kind of lower social um, classes and especially women. 
Um, and obviously that's the opposite as to what, you know, governments and banks should be doing. Um, and so we really believe that everyone should have a right over their own money and decentralization is the way forward. Yeah, indeed, I know uh, with the, uh, when we talk about decentralization, we are already in, in the centralized system. So, you know, there is these uh, issues when it comes to uh, adapting to change. So since we are uh, in this centralized uh, system already, and we are looking at decentralized, and people are, are asking questions, you know, are there no risk? You know, we'll be talking about the risk associated with centralized system. So are there no risk associated? There should be risk associated. So what are some of these risks associated with uh, decentralization? Um, well, it, there, there's a lot of benefits, but yeah, like you said, there's always some sort of drawback. So the drawbacks that I can think of is, there, there's going to be have to be new ways to um, investigate people that use money in crimes um, and, and and new ways in order to address that because it's not as easy to uh, like pull money back with the banking system they can pull money back and move it around they can put blocks in there with decentralized systems um, you can't do that so uh, when when law enforcement works with crimes they're going to have to um, find new tools, find new tactics in order to do that. They're going to have to find the, the people that are that are committing the crimes. So it, it'll be different. Um, but again, there's, I think, a lot of benefits to decentralization that outweigh those. Personally, I think so. So Absolutely. And I think, you know, in addition to that, um, it's widely considered that a decentralized network, um, you know, sacrifices um, utility and, and that's increased fees and transaction times. However, we believe that that's really kind of what Nano is balancing right now when it comes to payments um, and that the utility of Nano is not sacrificed by having a decentralized network. Um, so, of course, there are risks when it comes to, as exactly as Colin said, um, when governments are looking to you know, adopt digital money and cryptocurrency or be able to um, support their countries when it comes to crime and the risk associated there. But um, when it comes to that finding that perfect balance, um, that's kind of what we're striving for at the moment. Interesting to hear that. You know, uh, when we talk about decentralization, uh, I want to understand, uh, you know, this is, is, if it's not a revolution, I must say it's a revolution. So uh, what's, uh, what we, uh, is, you are the uh, judge, you are the co uh, CEO of Nano, uh, Colin is the uh, founder and CEO of Nano. So in what way is Nano uh, leveraging the decentralized world? to bring solution to the problems the world is facing today. Yeah, I mean, our core goal really as, as digital money is decentralization. You know, we have Nano as a working network. It's been operating for five years and delivers fee-less and instant transactions to and from anywhere in the world. Um, and that's all you need is an internet connection and a mobile phone. And that really is what decentralization is about, about having the right in your hand over your own money and what do you want to do with it um, so you know it is it's a huge factor to what we are trying to work forwards when it comes to payments globally colin do you have anything to add to to that um so yeah i mean the the decentralized part of nano is that you can download the app and you can start using it right away there you don't have to go to a bank you don't have to walk into anywhere or fill out a form in order to use it um, it's it's open to anyone to use. So when you when you have that ability, it it um, it really gives people the power to use their money that they earn how they want to, um, which is, is a core goal of what we're doing. Okay, interesting uh, to see what uh, you know. Uh, the, when you talk about everyone having the right to uh, his uh, money, and we see uh, things are changing that way. Uh, so we are looking into decentralization. Uh, which, what is happening in the world now? What would you say would be the future of decentralization? I think, you know, we are very early and it's very, we're in the embryonic stage, I think, right now when it comes to decentralized networks and infrastructure. Um, however, I think people in the world are starting to care a lot more about what their money is built upon, the accessibility of their own money. And I think we will start to see a, quite a visible shift towards a more democratic model, such as, as we have with Nano. Um, you know, there's a huge collection um, that's starting to really come out in the world of companies 
who are in the space who really champion decentralization and the benefits that it can bring. So we're really looking forward to be able to kind of start and improve working with those companies and, and champion um, this facet. Um, Colin, what's your view on that? Yeah, I mean, I uh, my goal, I don't know how, when it's going to happen, but the goal is to have a decentralized world currency. And I think that that is going to help a lot of people. There's a lot of um, governments in the world that print money um, because they're the centralized persons that can print money and they give it to who they want. And I don't think that that's um, sustainable. I don't think people like it. So I think we're going to keep pushing out nano um, and this decentralized money model. And the goal is for everyone in the world to be able to use money um, without their banks um, making their their money that they've been saving not uh, worthless or to erode it. So I I have I still have high hopes on it. I know right now we're <laughs> we're in um the, the very initial stages, like George was saying, um, of decentralization, it's it's a very, very small part of like the whole world currency market, um, cryptocurrency. There's a lot of ways, there's a lot of distance to go, but that that's the goal is to get it around the world into everyone's hand. Yeah, we're looking forward to champing in it um, and <laughs> changing other people's views on it, showing them the, the light, I think, really, when it comes to decentralization. Okay, finally, before we draw the curtain on today's episode of Coin News Australia Interview Session, um, well, are we expecting anything uh, from Nano in the next year? Uh, this is already gone. And uh, what's your closing remark from both of you, finally? There's, uh, there's, I mean, there's so much news and so much going on within Nano, within the ecosystem. We've got a, a huge growing community. And as I said, you know, mentioned earlier, a huge community and organic community growing in um, various countries within continental Africa and especially when it comes to Nigeria and Ghana um, and various other countries like that. Um, so we actually we have our next release coming out v22 um, quite soon we've got a, a lot of other large and very exciting announcements and use cases um, to be able to show the world um, soon but obviously we can't share them quite yet unfortunately but it's a very very exciting time for digital money like Ghana right now. Interesting. Colin, what's your closing remark? <laughs> I don't know if I have anything to add. I think that's all about it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, yeah, there's tons and tons of more people that we're working with um, every single day. You know, we're just pushing out and out and out um, to more and more people, um, which is great. On a technical level, which is what I look at mostly, um, things are going along very well. We're trying to make it easier and easier for people to use, to use in their business. Um, and we're going to keep doing that until it's so simple that anyone can use it. And that's the goal. It is indeed. It is. Thank you very much. for <laughs> It was an interesting one. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, I so much appreciate it. Thank you, uh, George, for joining us today on Coin News. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a great chat and look forward to it. Thank you, uh, Colin, also for joining yep. us. No problem. Perfect. Uh, it's our